Hi everyone, it's Sanda from Creation Experience with Sanda. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here, for being on my channel and watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you will get notified when I upload new videos, which is great. This video is a special one because I have a guest coming over. This guest is my mom, Nella Chop. She also joined me for my last video where we talked about the differences between Serbian and Croatian language. In this video, we are going to talk about the life in Yugoslavia compared to life in Croatia today. I'm very excited to have my mom join me in this video again. Thank you everyone for your nice comments and welcome you gave to my mom on this channel so don't forget to check out her channel because she also has a youtube channel i will link her channel in the description below and now let's get into the video let me introduce you to my mom this is my mom nella thank you <laughs> thank you say hi hi <laughs> So, she was born during Yugoslavia, when Croatia was part of Yugoslavia, uh, which was a socialist federal republic of six different nations. Yes? That's right, that <laughs> was uh, 60 years ago. <laughs> so, well, I lived about uh, half of my life, uh, 30 years in Yugoslavia and 30 years now in Croatia. That must be interesting, right? Wow, <laughs> it is. It's, it was really a very nice experience, I must say. And just to sort this thing in the beginning, did things change? Don't tell me how, just tell me, are there differences in oh, the yes, lifestyle? Yes, uh, the differences are great. So, I'm curious to know why and my <laughs> first question is actually just shortly, can you say to everybody who maybe don't know, um, what was Yugoslavia, what countries were part of Yugoslavia and when did Yugoslavia stop being Yugoslavia and we just became the Republic of Croatia? Well, uh, Yugoslavia was formed after the Second World War in Europe in 1945 and it was a socialist uh, republic, which means that uh, everything in the country was made to serve the people, that was the ideology. Oh, so it wasn't Russia, it wasn't no. communism. No, no, uh, this was a completely independent country from the so-called Eastern Bloc. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of advantages because of that. Uh, we, we had more freedom, we could travel abroad, we could learn languages. The social everyday life was very rich, people were active in sports and cultural events and it was actually a very uh, easy and carefree sort of life because everything that we needed was uh, served to us. Okay, so even though it was socialist federative republic, which is nowadays kind of uh, every time you say that, everybody thinks, oh yeah, it's Russia. Yeah. Uh, no, no it's, so it has nothing to do with Russia. You never felt repressed to live in Yugoslavia? No, uh, the majority of the people, and altogether there were six nations mm -hmm. with uh, about 20 million people, uh, were content to live in that country. Great. So, which were those six countries which were forming the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Uh, starting from the west, it was Slovenia, then Croatia, then uh, Serbia, uh, with two autonomous provinces, and then uh, there was uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, and Macedonia. And there were three official languages spoken at that time in the country, uh, one was uh, Croatian or Serbian, or Serbo-Croatian, or Croatian-Serbian, that's all one language. If you actually. want to know more about that, watch yeah. the video, I will link above and below. <laughs> yeah, and the two languages which uh, differed more were Macedonian and uh, uh, Slovenian. But all of these languages have the same foundation, uh, they are uh, South Slavic languages, so we could understand each other, basically. Yeah. And that's actually where the name Yugoslavia 
comes from Yug in Croatian means south. And grab your notebook because this is a short lesson. Yug is south. Slavenski is Slavic. And Yugoslavia basically means the land of South Slavs which is all the Slavic na nations which my mom mentioned. There are other Slavic nations such as Slovak people, Czech people, Polish people, Ukrainians, Russians, but these countries are South Slavic people on the coast of the Adriatic Sea which is part of the Mediterranean and around the region around the Adriatic. Yes. So, now let's get to the point. Um, how was the experience of life in Yugoslavia like for you? I would like to know about what was um, health situation like, what was educational system like, and uh, what was job situation like. So, all of that is connected to the life in general. So, yes. let's start with one of those. Well, let's start from the education, because I think that is a very important mm -hmm. thing for everyone in every country in the world. And that's kind of what this channel is about. If yeah. you know, I teach creation, and I'm all about education. <laughs> yes, well, uh, the good thing was that we really had totally free, cost-free education, from uh, the primary school, from kindergarten even, mm -hmm. to the university or to other de uh, post-university degrees like... Uh, okay, uh, like master's degree, doctor's degree, specialization. Yes, these are the postgraduate degrees, okay. everything was completely free. And that was free for, for everyone. Who paid for it? The state paid for it. Mm. Oh, so Yugoslavia paid for it. Yes, Yugoslavia. <laughs> it wasn't as bad, maybe. <laughs> yes, uh, that was a very good thing indeed, because uh, before that, uh, the people living in Yugoslavia, and among them the Croats too, uh, were very poor people and they had no opportunity of uh, uh, getting higher education. You know what? I have an idea. If you want to know more about Croatia before Croatia and before Yugoslavia, <laughs> we can make a whole new video about that. Yes, I Are know. you up for it? Yes, I would like to tell people about, for it because, <laughs> about it because uh, my, the generations before told me about of it. Course. My grandmothers, grandfathers, and I have a lot of knowledge about it. And uh, many people who watch this channel are Croatian descendants. Yes. So their uh, ancestors come from Croatia hundreds or 200 years ago. Uh, yeah. I want to emphasize that people were really happy that they could uh, have a good education now. Okay, because before that most of the country was based on a rural society, agriculture. Yes, and they didn't have money nor opportunities for mm -hmm. anything else than some perhaps primary school. Most of people, right? Most of the people. So uh, you were happy going to school, you had yes. nice opportunities. Yes, I was going to a very good mm -hmm. high school. We uh, learned uh, several languages mm -hmm. as obligatory languages, for instance. In my class, I learned English and French mm -hmm. besides Croatian. And then you went to the university, you studied economics. Yes, How was that in like? the University of Vieca. It was also very interesting mm -hmm. because uh, it as uh, it was uh, an education in the Socialist Republic. She also, you told me once that you uh, yeah. still learned about, uh, you, you weren't learning that there is only socialist economy, no. you were learning about all, that, all different sorts of economy and society. Yes, uh, we had uh, an overview of everything, mm -hmm. we didn't know the details. Okay, and uh, do you want to move on to talk about health? Yes, uh, the healthcare system was mm -hmm. also uh, very highly advanced. Also, everything was completely free for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Every person in that uh, country had a state uh, health insurance. So whatever happened uh, health-wise to anyone, 
whether it was uh, a baby or an older person, whether mm -hmm. that person was employed or unemployed, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, whether it was a housewife or not, everybody had uh, that kind of health uh, insurance. Health insurance, which was also provided by the state. Yes, and there, were, there was a very good uh, system of health care mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of doctors, a lot of specialists, mm -hmm. and it was functioning well. That's nice to hear. Yes, that uh, a social uh, community, social mm -hmm. care was quite advanced at that time. So it really was not only in theory uh, accommodating the needs of an average person. Yes, and that's why uh, quite a mm -hmm. few people were satisfied. Uh, because uh, finally, after so many years, yes. uh, they had their needs fulfilled, their basic human needs. Yeah, like or education and health care. And the third one yes. uh, was housing. Housing? Yes. The, the so you didn't need to take loans, uh, bank loans or mortgages no. or oh, credit? <laughs> no, no? no, the bank loans <laughs> didn't exist. <laughs> and there was no debt. People so had no debt. <laughs> how did you get a house? In well, everybody was provided a house. So the state an just apartment. gave you an apartment. Yes, uh, that was that's a, great. That was uh, <laughs> uh, going on till the 1980s, actually, mm -hmm. till about 1985. So all the young couples, all the young people who wanted to have a family, mm -hmm. after they got married, they would get an apartment where they could have a family and raise their kids. That's beautiful. That was very uh, nice. <laughs> and uh, it helped a lot of people, of course, because they were carefree about where to live, how to live. Mm -hmm. And also for everyone who was working, uh, uh, they tried to make and build the apartments near the uh, working place. Yes, that was very important so that people would not uh, lose so much of their time on, okay. on uh, driving or anything else. Uh, I will link a video about which I made about a part of town, a part of my hometown, Rijeka, which is full of these blocks of buildings which were built in the 80s. Yes. Shkurinje. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of that type of housing, but it was working really well. Everybody had an apartment. Yeah, they were very decent apartments. Not so yeah. big. Uh, yeah. r relatively modest, like two rooms and the living room. Yeah, everybody had a bedroom and mm -hmm. a kitchen and a, a living room and everybody had what everybody. Yeah, it was a modest needs. living, you know. Yeah, nothing extravagant. Yeah, and connected to that uh, mm -hmm. were of course the shop, the shops and that economic uh, system that provided everyone with a job. So, so how they were you not provide everyone with a job? Well, uh, by planning uh, the, <laughs> the creation of the companies, uh, by establishing enough companies, enough workplaces for everyone. So, you know, if you would have like a, um, a hundred teachers mm -hmm. going out from school, or a thousand teachers, you would have to plan enough schools and enough workplaces for them. So. Uh, the state was actually planning, uh, making a plan of what to do with all the people living in the states. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. today, nowadays, for example, in Croatia, I'm often surprised with how many older people I see picking up um, plastic bottles from the trash bins. I made a video about that, which I will link below how you can sell the plastic bottles here. And uh, a lot of people struggle in a way. Yeah. And there are homeless people, uh, which I didn't see when I was growing up in the 90s, which wasn't Yugoslavia anymore, but I still didn't see them. So was this the case in Yugoslavia? Were there people sleeping under the bridge or homeless people? No, absolutely not. The mm -hmm. social care system mm -hmm. and the, so the protection, the social protection were also very advanced and uh, the mm -hmm. people, the professionals working with uh, in the social care system were uh, really doing a great work. Okay. So all the uh, possible uh, problematic families where there was alcohol or some sort of mm -hmm. other addiction at that <laughs> time that 
there wasn't as much as today, or ne the crime uh, rate was zero. The crime rate was zero. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like utopian society yeah, we could now. Walk, we could walk around anywhere. I remember Sandra, yeah. uh, when uh, several times my family uh, forgot to lock uh, the house when we left somewhere for yes. two days, three days. Two or three days. Yeah, and you know, uh, we, <laughs> we, we weren't really sure if the house was locked or not, but we didn't really mind or care because we knew everything was safe. And since you were a baby, you played by yourself, yeah. right? In the street, you went... What, what was uh, your age when you were sent to go to the local store by yourself for oh, the first time? I was about five and I went mm -hmm. to buy bread. For the family it was a walk, uh, you know, about uh, like 500 meters. No, oh, 500, but across the street and everything. Yeah, and uh, at that time there were not, not so many vehicles <laughs> <laughs> when I was so small, but uh, generally the safety level was absolute. Now we learned many new and wonderful things. I think everybody wants to have free education, free housing and a safe society with a zero crime rate and a health uh, insurance which is provided. So far Yugoslavia sounds awesome, right? Uh, but I'm sure there were some negative sides. Oh yes, of course. Yeah? So what were those negative sides? Well, there were some really uh, serious negative sides in this country and that was the lack of uh, freedom of speech mm -hmm. and the lack or impossibility of having private uh, ownership in a larger scale. For example, uh, many houses or, or ma what? Many anything. You could, many have, anything. you could have one house, one apartment, one car okay. per family. So you couldn't have three different companies, three cars, a house? No, no. Okay. Uh, the companies, uh, the private companies didn't exist until I think 1990 uh, practically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh, some sole proprietorships were enabled uh, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the lack of freedom of speech was uh, evident because uh, if someone wanted to oppose something, he couldn't do it directly. Okay. So you must, you could, you should, uh, people had to find some other indirect ways to uh, achieve something if possible. So what would happen if you would say something in politically incorrect? Would you end up in jail? Would, would you have people well, uh, bothering you at work? What would happen? Uh, that was the situation after the Second World War. Okay. But later on in the 80s it was uh, very flexible. Mm -hmm. And the people were also uh, changing, the situation was changing. So in the 70s yeah. it was already a really modern country. In the 70s it was not yet so modern, but mm -hmm. uh, it was a really socialist state. Okay. Uh, but the negativities were evident. Mm -hmm. And people uh, who wanted to have more, who had uh, more talent or capacity, bigger capacities, okay. uh, couldn't uh, couldn't achieve anything uh, aside from what was mm -hmm. enabled to them. So, if somebody, let's say, had the vision to, uh, I don't know, make this great school for languages or a great hotel no. or that was impossible okay. and should have been then in that case state owned okay uh, so what happened then well uh, finally the mm -hmm. change occurred and croatia became independent when <laughs> So now when Croatia became independent, uh, that was quite an abrupt change, right? Yes, and uh, uh, the Croatia had to find solutions mm -hmm. now uh, uh, because of that background, which was completely socialist. And now it wasn't socialist anymore, yes. now it was capitalist. Yes, all of a sudden. Yeah. And uh, it was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. And people had various ideas how capitalism should work in mm -hmm. Croatia. But uh, the result varied. In some spheres of life, uh, it, w it is uh, excellent. For, insta for instance, people can have uh, as much pr property as they want. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they're completely free to have uh, jobs wherever they want in the entire world, mm -hmm. in Croatia as well. Uh, they can have their own incentives. Uh, but the social side declined. Okay. And that means that... And that's why I see elderly people looking yeah. at trash bins to find yeah. plastic bottles to sell. And that was quite devastating okay. for people who were not used to being jobless, homeless, mm -hmm or uh, which is nowadays uh, quite acute yeah. uh, children who could not have further education after middle mm -hmm. school. So, so these are the problems that are actual today in yeah. Croatia. And that is why people living in Croatia today are um, uh, quite worried and anxious and they have to work a lot and they have to seek new job opportunities yeah. and how to earn more income. So uh, in that sense, uh, life uh, has become complex. <laughs> so of course, probably you are watching this channel because you're interested in Croatia, you love Croatia. This is a paradise country. It's amazing. And it's still very safe. It's, um, I love this place. There is still uh, health insurance, there is still social insurance, maybe it doesn't work as well as it did, but compared to some other countries where I have lived, uh, here we have everything functioning at the basic level better than in some other places and definitely less expensive. For example, the education and the healthcare. But uh, the other side of it is that it's also quite difficult to um, make your ends meet in a way and that's why many young people are leaving Croatia and the number of the general population declined yeah. and that's another video we will make so we plan to make a video about that and about what was Croatia before Croatia and Yugoslavia yeah <laughs> I'd like that really so thank you for coming. Thank you. I, I really love making interviews with you. Thank you. I love to come here. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my mom's channel. And if you'd like more videos like this one, support me on Patreon. I will include my link below and support my mom as well. If you have been following my channel, you know she's been struggling with leukemia for the past 15 years and she's the bravest Croatian woman I know. <laughs> I made some videos about her which I will leave up here. If you click up here you can watch them. So I, just so you know that every contribution of yours is very well used and very well appreciated. So see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye. Dovidenia. <laughs> Dovidenia.